Coming up on Yours in Education, how Placer County is preparing teachers and administrators for the future with leading edge advancement programs. Plus, fueling innovation with top-notch STEM schools. I think the, the creativity piece and skill is definitely going to be a quality they need. Why this teacher says young students are much more prepared for college and for jobs in tech that haven't even been created yet. I think every single day we have the opportunity to help our students understand and find their own greatness. And meet Placer County's High School Teacher of the Year, Mr. Rowe's secret to his success and what he's most proud of in the classroom. Hi there, welcome to our first edition of Yours in Education, brought to you by the Placer County Office of Education. I'm your host, Kelly DeMarco, and joining me is Placer County's Superintendent of Schools, Gail Garbolino Mojica. Now, Gail has worked alongside educators and administrators to provide an incredibly competitive, comprehensive, and rigorous education for the 70,000 students in Placer County. I'm gonna brag just a little bit. She's also recognized across California for accomplishments in leadership and advocacy for students and women in leadership. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. We have a really great show for you today, but here's what we have here over this next year. We're gonna cover a wide range of topics to keep parents, students, staff, and administrators up to date for really what's going on in Placer County education. We're also gonna showcase some of the incredible programs and teachers who are really making a difference. But first, let's start with a topic that we can't shy away from, and that's taking a closer look at staffing shortages. And Gail, there was a report out last April that says nearly half of the school districts, and this isn't just locally, but nationwide, have multiple vacancies. Why is that? Well, it's a combination of things. First of all, is we have a workforce that is retiring. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of our certificated teachers, our classified personnel, you know, moving on into their next phase of their lives. In addition, the last three years have created some really uh, tough working conditions for our schools. And right. some um, employees, some teachers and classified personnel are deciding that this maybe isn't the career for them. And so they are choosing to leave the profession. So um, regardless of the last three years, this would have happened on the natural just with the number of uh, personnel that, that we have that are heading into their retirement years. And this is not just high school, but you're talking elementary, middle and high school, really across the board. It really is across the board. It doesn't really matter if you are in a suburban or a rural or an urban district. These vacancies uh, are across um, all sectors of public education right now. So let's talk a little bit about bus drivers because we know they are essential too, especially for students who can't walk to school in some of those rural areas. But the Mid Placer Public Schools Transportation Agency and other districts notified families last year that there just weren't enough bus drivers to get kids to school. And I, I imagine that was kind of difficult on parents, right? That was a tremendous hardship on our parents. Um, and I know that Mid Placer and all of our other school districts that provide transportation are trying to come up with innovative and effective ways in which they can attract new employees to this position. Uh, they've been advertising on Facebook and Craigslist. They've been parking you know, school buses with uh, you know, sign-on bonuses, uh, trying to attract all sorts of individuals. It does take about two months if, if somebody does apply to become a, a bus driver to be certified by CHP. Um, but you know we have had a, a couple of handful of individuals who have been interested completely understand that um, especially in our rural communities where parents do rely heavily on transportation if we're not able to provide transportation that really does impede a child's ability to access their education. Great information so if you or someone you know would like to become a bus driver or maybe other school support personnel for the new school year super easy just go to edjoin.org for more information 
Another thing I wanted to talk about on the show today is these credential programs. I know there are five credential programs to really help prepare and retain educators. And I want you to talk about this opportunity a little bit, Gail, because this is great. It's a first for teachers. Um, this is also for administrators. But what does this mean first for teachers who want to do the work in one of these 16 districts? So one of the reasons that we have a workforce shortage right now in public education is that we don't have um, a large pipeline of institutions that can credential individuals who are interested in becoming a classroom teacher. So the Placer County Office of Education a handful of years ago were approved by the California Teaching Commission to offer a variety of teaching credentials locally. So we can advertise and we can train and we can prepare our own residents in our community uh, taught by our esteemed educational leaders and our district leaders um, and really create our own little pipeline so that we can um, have a qualified personnel and a qualified workforce from our local residents in our local schools. It seems like such a good program too, as we're watching the video, you can just see how excited these teachers are. I know they work in these programs with mentors that really help them along the way. And this kind of brings them up to the next level, right? Like it really um, increases their capacity for higher learning. You know not only are our teachers really enjoyed being mentored by our educational leaders in our county, but our educational leaders in our county enjoy learning and getting to know our young teaching workforce. And they have been so impressed, not only by their commitment to the education and their skills and their training, but we're actually front loading these individuals with priorities in our counties um, so that they are well equipped and they understand some of the initiatives that are important to us and they can come in in their first couple of years of, of education and be successful. So it's a true win-win for both the teaching candidate and for the school district leadership as well. So talk a little bit about the credential program for administrators. Is it similar in length? How is How are they different? It is similar. So uh, teachers who wish to uh, become an educational leader um, need to have an administrative service credential. So our program does offer that opportunity for our, our local teachers to seek an opportunity for uh, advancement uh, and it's a combination of coursework and meeting with mentors um, and we've actually attracted a lot of our Placer County Teachers of the Year have actually become administrators in our county so um, it's a great opportunity uh, to learn about the research behind being a good educational leader um, and we want to make sure that we have opportunities for our local residents and our local teachers uh, for uh, leadership opportunities in our, in our uh, county. Yeah and this is really the the next step for a lot of these teachers to move up. And I have to say, we've met a lot of these teachers. The teachers of the year we're gonna be highlighting not just in this show, but in the months to come. So really great job with that. It's obviously working really well and they seem really happy. So yeah, yeah. I wanna also mention too, if you are interested in learning more, you can visit placercoe.org. Just type in credential programs into the search bar and you'll find all the information there if you're interested. Well, let's have some fun seeing how Placer County schools are leading the way when it comes to high quality and robust science, technology, engineering, and math. You know it is STEM education. Students master critical thinking, resilience, problem solving, collaboration, and really understanding just how things work. We held to Silverado Middle School where Mr. Edwards is getting students excited about coding. Second. I always start out the, the class with how does the internet work? You ask them and they're like, I don't know, you know, no idea. I think that's really important that they understand that. I mean, that's just a basis for how we evolved in technology, really. I go over it with them and then they have to create, it's almost like a children's book, so their goal is to explain how the internet works to, let's say, a third grader. Most people know about, you know, computers to a certain extent think coding is typing thousands of lines of text, which it is, but how they do it for kids on these programs is, it's called um, like visual coding or block coding. So they move blocks and they connect blocks together that have these characters which are called sprites. So the image moves, you can set background music, you change the color, you can create these little video games. But there's also stuff for art. We have a 3D printer, so they can print out these little keychains. Seventh graders aren't gonna wanna type a thousand lines of code to do that, so it's very simple and they really enjoy it. 
what I found doing this is I have some of the same students in math. You couldn't get them to do a homework assignment, you know, at all. But they were doing, they would go home on this coding, they come back and they'd be, look what I did last night. And they did, you know, this really complex thing that probably took them several hours. I try to get them to do seven math problems, like not happening. I really like it and I'm interested in technology too and just trying to find things that they're gonna have fun with and they like. I'm just happy that, especially here at Silverado and I'm pretty sure district-wide that they're really pushing their STEM program, letting us be creative in what we do. Well, Mr. Edwards tells me he's been a teacher at Silverado Middle School since it opened 27 years ago. And because of the support he gets from the district, he's never even thought about going anywhere else. He loves his job, so, so happy for him. Now from a STEM class to a STEAM school. Yes, we're adding the A, and that A is for art. We're taking a look at a brand new school in Western Placer County that's really paving the way when it comes to empowering their students to find new solutions and experiment in all of their classrooms. We have gone through trainings and uh, slowly started implementing what, what it means to be a STEAM school and integrating all of the aspects, science, technology, engineering, art, math, into as many lessons as possible for these kiddos. In an ideal project or lesson, all five elements are integrated and uh, when you do it properly, um, then the students benefit the most. Even from kindergarten, the, a lot of the team they're doing is just exposure. We can use these. You want to be able to share one? There was a project last year where the uh, uh, younger class was designing and building a, a playground using models. So they're getting exposed to the idea that they can create. And I think the creativity piece is a huge part of it and a huge skill that a lot of our students will come out with. I was in a classroom today that was talking about colonies. And um, what they do is they have students do a little research on it themselves. They uh, would try to present, maybe especially with history, you can talk about the problem. It still is a shift of I'm gonna tell you what you're learning versus I want you to explore. And that's really what the STEAM education is all about, is having students come up with their own choices and their own solutions, and there's no one right solution. Our students are adults. There's careers that, that don't exist yet, right? And uh, I think the, the creativity piece and skill is definitely gonna be a quality they need. Western Placer is a, a great district to be in. They, they have their eye on expansion and they have their eye on what alternative learning opportunities can we offer our students other than the typical college career path. We're still new, and so it's something that we're, we're gonna continue to grow each year, and hopefully to where it just becomes second nature, and the students definitely embrace it. They love it. This must make you so proud to see these students. They're learning in this new, critical way. I think back to when we were kids, they didn't have anything like that, and it's so fun to see these kids learning like this. I remember the first time I went into an elementary school in the county, and I saw third graders doing coding, and I thought to myself, I can't do that. I, I didn't know what it was either. So it's, it's really yeah. remarkable what uh, education provides our students in our counties. And I'm so proud of the school districts and the teachers and the students for what they've been able to accomplish. And I have to ask you, I mean, you've been in this position for a long time. So you're seeing some of the high school kids graduate with this kind of background. I imagine this is coding. The STEM is really preparing them for the future. And what we're finding is that the kids really enjoy these career exploration opportunities. Uh, we have such a robust level of CTE, career technical education at many of our high schools where they're learning um, you know construction technology or they're learning um, computer science and they're seeing the real world applicability um, and it's exciting and it's keeping them interested and motivated and their eye on the future. I love that you know things are changing not every kid now is going to college so they have this kind of training to really prepare for the future. Gail you have some incredible teachers in Placer County and they really go above and beyond for their students. Let's meet Craig Rowe an English teacher at Truckee High School who was just given one of the biggest awards of the year. 
are you willing to make sacrifices? Every time you walk into Mr. Rowe's room, you already know that it's time to work. That is a four on a Monday. That's a four on a Tuesday. That's an all week four. Okay, I love it. Well, you will walk in and he is rocking a beanie and an oversized flannel. And then we'll come back strong. Okay, let's do it. And that rap music is bumping down the hallway. Oh, the music is probably my favorite part. I think everyone's able to perform at their highest quality, honestly, when they have a little bit of music in the background, especially his rap music. Any questions of what just went down? It's not a vocation for me. It's a salvation for me. Every single day, I I'm finding purpose in the students. His story is different than the majority of educators. I was very challenged as a student. I kind of hated school in high school, right? I, I barely graduated. I was a one, six, seven. As teachers, I think every single day we have the opportunity to, to help our students understand and find their own greatness. When the sun rises, it rises for everybody, truly. For students to realize that they can find success in so many different ways is really powerful. Beautiful, right? Look in front of that subject and what do you see? Thank you for like always like pushing me, always believing in me, and also like having that impact in our school, that positive impact, like inspiring all the students to do their best. If a kid gets nothing out of my classes, I hope they understand that I'm being who I am and that who they are is enough as well. Mr. Rowe seems like such a fun teacher. And I hear, he, is he a finalist for this year's California Teacher of the Year, like the whole state Teacher of the Year? That is correct. For the state of California, he's been named as one of the finalists. And I think it just goes to his background, what he's overcome, and the impact that he has made on his students. And he has, he has big dreams, and he will accomplish a lot. I know you spent time with him and it's so funny because you watch that story, you hear the rap music bumping out in the schools and sometimes, you know, it's that really creative way I think that certain teachers find to connect with their students and that's what those kids remember. And he has definitely made a connection with his students and really has tapped into a lot of their creativity and a lot of their drive and what he's been able to accomplish up in Tahoe Truckee um, has been amazing. So it's no wonder that he is a finalist for such a prestigious award in the state of California. I love that. Gail, thank you for all you do. I think this is such a great platform to let people know all the good stories that are happening within Placer County. I think so much, and I know this from a news background, so much of the stories we hear can be negative. And I know you're doing so much in this area, and I just want to thank you for that. And I love the teachers that work for you. I, I just can't wait to share their stories throughout this year. Thank you. We are very proud of the education that we have here in our county, and it's due to the high quality districts and the teaching uh, and all the support staff that make basically Placer County Golden Education. Absolutely. All right, Gail, thank you so much. So we have so much to share with you in the coming months. Coming up on our next episode, marching to the beat of their own drums. We're gonna bring you inside one of the best band programs in Northern California and learn why students say it's changed their lives in ways they didn't expect. That and much more on Yours in Education brought to you by the Placer County Office of Education. Take care and we will see you next time. Oh,